Welcome to another episode of Middle Ground with JLE LLC, where we treat you like family. That is the theme song, Detroit Love, off my first album, The JLE Experience. I own the music and copyright. Don't mute nothing Facebook. Always got to say that. We have another amazing guest for you today. We have the strategist, speaker, consultant, and founder of Crusaders Networking, Wendy C. Cavalier. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Jeffrey. I am tickled to be here. It's always fun to do something with other local pros like you. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. First question, what led you to this path? Oh, so you probably don't want me to go all the way back to I was born in a log cabin in Marquette, Michigan. That's probably too far back. Hey, uh, about you. Do, do you. <laughs> uh, you did tell me that, didn't you? Uh, honestly, I, I think what led me to my path was what happened when the path I thought I was going to be on ended. Uh, I, I went through college. My, my, my college degree is political science and oh, United wow. States history. And I had this wonderful rose colored glasses on uh, what government and politics was like. And I thought that I wanted to do that for a living. I wanted to work in politics. I wanted to work in Washington, D.C. I wanted to be a part of history. And uh, the last two years I was in college, I actually worked on a, a state level campaign for a state representative. And uh, it was it was a soul shattering, horrible experience. It, it literally left me believing that I was incapable of doing anything right. And wow. yeah, oh, it was, yeah. And it's it's really funny because, I mean, when you have your illusions shattered, you have this illusion of what it's going to be like and you're going to walk the path and you've been spending five years of your life, you know, my senior year of high school and four years of college with this intended goal in mind and everything came to a head. The election was in November. I graduated in December. And, and at that point, I can remember standing in the, the voting booth mm -hmm. and I hesitated to vote for the candidate I had spent two years working for. What? That's, wow. that's how bad my experience was with it with this experience and and i remember thinking to myself wendy if you don't vote for him you just said everything you've done for two years was wasted so so i did i voted for him but he didn't win and and i was actually grateful for that because it meant i did not have a job waiting for me it meant i didn't have to make that decision but now the campaign's over i've graduated okay I, I don't think I'm capable of being employed because my 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 self-respect, my ego, my, you know, uh, had just been beaten down so, so badly. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm, there are people listening right now, and I bet you have too. One of those experiences where you went left and it was wrong. So then you went right and it was wrong. So, so yeah. that's so, so the path that brought me to my purpose actually began with <laughs> with not knowing what to do next i kind of i became lost and okay. and so i started doing things like a uh, direct sales I, I did an mlm and uh, it's, it's not even around anymore but it was candles and accessories and uh i learned things there but what i learned is if i don't think anybody will hire me the only person who will is me so i i got into an entrepreneurial mindset of mm -hmm working mm -hmm. for myself or controlling my own life. And I did a lot of things. I, I did the direct sales. I was a right away agent with uh, Ameritech, which was a utility. I don't, they're not around wow. anymore. They've been bought and bought and bought. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, this hair is, this is a natural hair color people. This is, this is, I earned this. This is not. I remember Ameritech L'Oreal. in high school. Yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah, so that's how that's how old it is. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I, I when the contract I was working on got it got canceled after nine eleven. So I've had a I'm, God, I'm old, Jeffrey. I'm old. No, you're not. Um, you're <laughs> but uh, you're not. I, uh, my father wanted to start a vending and coffee business in the Greater Flint area. I'm originally from okay. the Greater Flint area, and. I didn't have anything else going on. I didn't know what I wanted to do anyways, because this, you know, past experience. So for 
seven years. I help operate a vending and coffee business in, okay. in you know, rent, but through the great recession, we just, there's just, we just couldn't do it. You can't, it's really hard to make a living a quarter at a time. Right. Yeah. And that's what it is. And then, and then I, I decided that there's something wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. I am not meant to be self-employed. I, I can't figure out how to be successful on my own. So okay. I got that safe hourly job, that clock in, clock out, Monday through Friday job in the basement of a national corporation. And oh, wow. that was the second worst work experience of my life. Uh, and I was there for three years, but I, but credit where credit is due. I needed the stability. And that's what it gave me. It gave me that stability that I was lacking. I had a regular paycheck every two weeks for the same amount of money. I had benefits. I had paid time off. I knew what I was going to be doing, even though it was very repetitive and boring. I, I needed mm -hmm. stability that came from it. And because of that, I did manage to buy my first home awesome. from, from, from working on that job. But after three years of being there, and uh, I'm an ambitious person, and realizing there's no place to go, the the best I could hope for in that corporate environment was a horizontal move into another department, and then fingers crossed in a year I might be able to move up, maybe. And I can remember the day the lady that I sat behind, sweet, sweet, sweet woman, she had been there for 35 years. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought to myself, I bet you, she doesn't make much more than me. She's been here for 35 years and she's sitting in front of me in a different cubicle. I don't want to be here in 35 years setting in a cubicle, right? Uh, and to each their own, but not for me. And that led to a conflict with my boss at that time. And mm -hmm. uh, she and I had a little had a little scuffle, uh, which is funny because I did recently find out she remembers me too. Uh, but that moment made me remember that I was an at will employee and I was no longer choosing to be there. So Ooh. that was the next pivotal moment in my career path that led me to what has become my purpose. So it sounds like a lot, but that put me back into the world of I want to be self-motivated. I want to reap the benefits of my work, my effort. And the best category for that for, for most people is a sales position where you earn commission based on your effort. Okay. And, and I went into credit card processing and I sucked at it. Uh, <laughs> But the reason I did is because it's not my style of selling. You know, there are more than one style of selling. There's more than one style of connecting. And that is a little bit more of a, of a cold hunting style where once you get the sale, you thank them for it. You hand the 800 number and you walk away. If they have a problem, they call the 800 number. Don't call me. I'm a call me girl. I'm a, you are part of my network. You are someone that I have accepted as part of my, my tribe or my pride or whatever. I'm a Leo. Yeah. So I'm big into lion things. And ah. that just wasn't my, yeah. So, yeah. So that's a big part of, big part of what makes me me is I want to, I want you to succeed and I want to be available to you to help you succeed. So about. One of the things that I did to try to become a better sales rep is I actually joined a referral group and, and it's a small businesses, businesses helping each other grow, find referrals. And about six months later, the gentleman who owns the organization asked if I would be interested in having my own team. And I thought, this is awesome. I, he just offered me a way to do what I love to do best, which is find out which makes people amazing and get to share them with others while getting paid to do it. And that's that was the beginning of my my true purpose. My my true purpose is inspiring connection is to to teach others, share with others, talk with others on the importance of being connected sincerely for not only your professional success, but your happiness. And and 9 years this month, 
I've been a meeting facilitator with that organization. And two years this month, I've been a, a strategic coach, consultant, and speaker on how to connect effectively for your success. And yes, that's my path. So it's a 20 year path and I'm glad I'm here, uh, but I wish it was 10 years earlier. Well, I'm learning on my journey that it's probably lessons within that 20 years you had to learn to help you when you I'm got not. to where you are. So I you can be awesome doing it now. Exactly. Somebody said, why, why are you the expert? And my reply was, I have failed a lot, but I'm still here. <laughs> True. We've got a few people. A former guest, Jackie. She's awesome. Say good evening. A teammate. Good evening. Dina. August. Yeah, go to say that Leo stuff. You know, I know a mm -hmm. few of y'all. But you <laughs> roaring lions and all that, you know. Shout out to personalities. Them, maybe a little extra <laughs> when they get around that town. Oh. Like, okay. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I know a few of them. They just like she did as proud. We do see. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was right on cue. <laughs> and then Gina say time will clap for you watch. Yep. Oh, I'm not man. sure what that yeah. means, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a fun one. Leo season, shout out to <laughs> uh, Next question, what is Crusaders Network? Crusaders Networking is the company that I founded. Um, so we all know 2020 was a year of fire. And some people fell to it, others rose. I happen to have rose out of it. Uh, over the course of 2020, I made it very a very serious goal of mine to make sure my clients were not victims of the lockdowns, the closures, et cetera. Because small business, we run on razor thin margins. We don't get to just shut our doors for weeks at a time and yeah. stay open. And uh, and so. <clears throat> As I mentioned, I, I you know I was I still facilitate referral teams, so we talked a lot about this is why you build network for the unexpected, so that mm -hmm. when it happens, it's not a crisis, it's an inconvenience. That okay. when uh, while our competition is waiting for permission, we're making plans. So when the lights come back on, we're in motion. We're going to be head and shoulders above our competition. And uh, I had some referral partners said that you need to start making videos because what you are sharing is so needed to be heard right now that you know you have people with you you are not a victim of this you're going to make a plan you're going to pivot you're going to adapt you're going to evolve and i started making videos for linkedin on fear and business and uh, the importance of network and i made a video about farming your business for success and i i used my own vegetable garden uh, you know, I had a vegetable garden with uh, zucchini growing and I said I planted the seed months ago, but I didn't just mm -hmm. drop it in the ground and walk away. You know, I Ooh. cultivated it. I gave it what it needed. And now I am reaping a bountiful harvest from the time I put in. And that video got the attention of a national sales director for a company. And nice. yes, yes. And uh, good. That was my first real professional lesson at that point is I didn't look into who I was talking to. I was just like, yeah, some guy booked time on my calendar. Uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> some guy, some guy booked on my calendar. <laughs> so lesson number one. Oh, man. LinkedIn is an awesome <clears throat> professional phone book. Yep. Take three minutes. Look somebody up. Yep. Right. And Always update your resume too. If you're doing new stuff, add it to your LinkedIn. Add it to your LinkedIn, exactly, because that's that's that check-in thing. And uh, so during my conversation with him, they were actually exploring uh, services that they could provide to their sales rep to help them overcome this massive hit to their income. Okay. And during our conversation, I I realized what I coach, what I do, is not default. 
you know, okay. focusing time and energy on creating referral connections, network, uh, networking with other businesses is something that people do when things are bad, but when things are good, it doesn't get the priority attention. Okay. And, and the interesting thing about that is you need the fire extinguisher before there's a fire. If you wait until your kitchen is on fire to then go buy one, you come back to a burned down house. So you yeah. need you need those resources before the crisis, not after the crisis has occurred. And that was the spark that gave me the idea for Crusaders networking. Okay. And uh, a crusader, and I wanted I wanted a name that had a call to action to it. There was energy to it. I see. Yeah. Yes. And when I found Crusaders. It wasn't the religious or the historical connotation. It's the the action or the adverb of crusader. Because a crusader to me is someone who has faith that if they commit to the journey, they will accomplish their goal regardless of the obstacles in their path. And, yeah, they committed. and true crusaders never walk alone. They mm -hmm. find others who will share their journey and help them overcome, even if their final goals are different. It's it's a team. So that's why it's Crusaders with an S, not an apostrophe S. It's it's intended to build your your army, your your tribe, your whatever you want to call it. It's intended to encourage people to make sure that they take the time to surround themselves with the correct people chosen by them, not not the people chosen by an employer. And networking is, if it doesn't say networking, somebody thinks it's a sales training or it's marketing. No, it's that third element. It's that missing piece. Mm -hmm. uh, you need sales, you need marketing, and you need to know how to connect effectively. And that's the part that most people don't recognize as a skill that they need to learn too. It's not making friends. It's that's sincerely connecting. That is true. Yes. Did I answer the whole question? Because I got lost in my own definition. Oh, no. You, 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 Tony, this show is about you, baby. You good. I know, but I want to make sure I take advantage of all of these wonderful opportunities you're giving me. Oh, yeah. We got time. Ain't no right. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and teammate said this while I love the show, doing ditto work in a cyber security space. Yep. Nice. Nice. Now, another former guest, Dr. Angela, the plant whisperer. Nice, nice work. Thank you. I a funny story with that one. I before I interviewed her, and I saw a plant whisper. I'm like, I ain't no builders need to be whispered to. Oh, <laughs> oh what is that? Oh, what is that? What kind of worse, mate? What is what is actual plants? Like, oh, okay. Actual, I'm, like, I'm, I'm gonna I'm, have. I'm, I'm telling I'm the show. Like, man, I thought this was something totally different that you do. We had a great that, laugh at it. Like, hey, I'm. Put it out there. I right? love that. Hey, it's Michigan. We are there are plants everywhere. So that's that's a very logical thought. I'm gonna have to get with her. I have friends who are plant addicts. So okay, right, right. she do her thing. She definitely gets you right. Yes. <laughs> now, what are the actual services that Crusaders Network offers? Offers. Okay. Um, I actually, this is one of the things I love because uh, Crusaders was founded, had its very first program two years ago on Thursday. So Groundhog's okay. Day. I chose Groundhog's Day on purpose because I wanted to do this forever. So, and we all know the Bill Murray movie. He lives the same day over and over again yes. until he gets it right. And like, mm -hmm. that's, this is what I want to do for forever. Uh, Crusaders started out as programs and workshops, but over the last few years, it's evolved into custom coaching, strategy consulting and now moving into speaking uh, services I actively offer. I do offer strategy planning, which okay. what I've, <clears throat> what I love about this is the, the skill that I coach is extremely customizable to you and your needs. Everyone has their own style. Everyone has their own personality. I actually provide an assessment that will show you where you naturally like to connect in what style and how. One of the things that I love about the strategy planning and the customers or the clients that seem to love that the most is they're pretty established already. They already have a large collection of business cards 
or professionals they've been with for over the years, or they have a book of business that they've already created, but they're not done growing. They want more. Okay. So we literally can talk about, well, what are the goals that you want? Let's talk about how to get you there effectively. I have one client right now. He is does not participate in any traditional networking activities at all. No chambers, no associations, no after hours, no mixers, no expos. He doesn't do anything that people think of when they think of networking, mm -hmm. which is fine because I'm not teaching people how to pass business cards and drink cocktails. I'm teaching people how to connect and leverage their existing network for more. Um, I'm very much about productive, gotcha. not busy. And so, so we're working together as well. Uh, I have a program that's launching next month, actually, that has an international footprint to it. Do you know that Americans network differently than anybody else in the world? Like Nobody what's a, else. What's an example uh, compared to everybody? Uh, else. An example is they don't have chambers of commerce. It wouldn't occur to them to go to an after hours mixer to talk to random other businesses. Why would oh. I want to talk to that business? They're not my customer. Why That's would right. I want? Yeah. And I didn't know this myself until 2020 when I started having conversations oh. with international coaches. And so there is a coach out of, out of France who works with business professionals of other countries who want to learn how to network in America. So we're actually beginning a program in March to teach them how to connect effectively with us. How nice for a change, right? Instead of, no, nice. no, no, Americans, you need to change. <laughs> or it's like, no, we got something good going on. How about we help you help, help you discover that? So I have an assessment. I have this program set up. I have personal coaching. Thank you. And uh, something else that I also do is I do work with right now, mostly agency owners, but business owners who have sales forces and they want two things. They want their sales, new sales guys or girls to sell faster okay. and stay longer. So what we do is we put them through an assessment we find the style that that new sales rep likes the most. Some people are comfortable in random networking events. You can send them to a random meetup and they're going to flourish. And then you have other people that are a little bit more introverted or a little bit more analytical. And they, they just think that's a horrifying experience to send me into a room full of strangers and say, go for it. They want to be in, an, in a referral group or a, an association, something repetitive, where they're going to see the same people on a consistent basis so they can build those relationships effectively. So we put them through this assessment first to really mm -hmm. highlight their natural strengths. Okay. And then we focus on what skills do you need in those environments to be effective quickly. And mm -hmm. that gets the sales pros selling faster, more comfortably. So both people are making money. Plus, they see that their employer invested in them and want them to be successful, so less turnover. Yeah, that do be an issue to turnover. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, I'm, I'm trying to be all nice, but... You are. Oh, and I like to speak publicly. This issue, you know, Leo, <laughs> what is a badass collaborator? Oh, see, collaboration. I talk about the <laughs> skill of intentional okay, connecting. Need. Uh -huh. Well, I part of the assessment is there's there's actually four different styles, and I describe them as landscapes, uh, hunting, farming, fishing, foraging. And the reason why I use these nature references is everybody knows what they are, regardless of where they come from in the world or where they grew up. If you could grow up in the middle of downtown Detroit, you know what farming is. True. You know what fishing is. You know what foraging is. You know what hunting is. So there's already a general understanding of the purpose of that skill set. I'm going to find random opportunities, so I'm foraging. Um, I'm going to deepen and maintain connections I already have, so I'm farming. Um, I'm going to find mentors, collaboration partners, earn my way into those bigger rooms. I'm my own bait, so I'm going to go fishing. Uh, okay. Hunters are traditionally very, very patient. Like they'll they'll make the perfect environment and then wait but they need to know that they're going to have success so a badass collaborator is i am a person who believes that collaboration is a form of connect of 
intentional connecting for success. What you do, and we're doing it right now. This is one of the reasons why I love podcasts and I love interviews is I get to stand with you and now your network gets to see me and you're standing with me on the same stage. So my network will now see you. So it's a way of bringing attention to you just Mm -hmm. by associating yourself with other great people, usually bringing mutual value. And, uh, and the reason why I call it a badass collaborator is I can find a way to support, encourage, and shine with any other person. And it's, and I don't want to say it's free. That's the wrong word. There's a lot of companies out there that use the word collaboration when they talk about working with their clients. But honestly, if I'm paying you for a service, we're not collaborating on a client. <laughs> no, no, we're not. You've, you've seen it, haven't you? Like, we love yeah. to collaborate with, no, I'm paying you to provide a service. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Please provide it. Um, mm-hmm. So Absolutely. so my collaboration partners are really about uh, helping each other grow, helping each other maybe earn an introduction or some credibility to to get into a larger room. And it's badass because um, I love it. I'm a badass. We're just going to go with that. You're a Stone Cold fan? I'm just wondering. To, <laughs> am I a Stone Cold fan? Yeah, I was wondering. Did she watch wrestling? Uh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, apparently not, because I didn't know what that was at first. <laughs> okay, you go to YouTube, click on Stone Cold Steve Austin. I know Stone Cold Steve Austin. I, uh, he really used awesome. to do. He used to do a show like the like the Stone Cold Steve Austin rant. And he had a few shows with Broken Skull or something. I know he got a podcast. Yes. And he had a show I, on the the TNN channel. Yes. It was something. I forgot the name of it. But that I loved that ranch one. Yes. I mean, of yeah. course, you know, I, I could have done it better. I, I could have lifted that 400 pounds and ran that 500. <laughs> 500 whatever. <laughs> yeah. You, you check out Stone Cold Steve Austin back in the, the late 90s, early millennium. Yeah, that was when wrestling was epic. You, mm. You're going you're gonna to like, oh, okay. Now I know you're talking about it. Think about that. <laughs> he, he was an everyday dude, his character. Drinking beer, beating up his boss, bucking the city, and become the world champ. And talk a lot of trash doing it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> That's what I thought about. It's like, she got badass. Like, hey, she yeah, wrestling she big. She's got a gangster to put that on the page. Like, okay. I ain't mad at her. And then I didn't know about this, but I'm anxious we hear Baby yeah. Animal Doula. What was that on your page, too? Uh, I'm funny. <laughs> I like to make okay. people laugh. And I was looking at my profile and it's coach, consultant, strategist, speaker, baby animal doula. So I wanted to end it with a little bit of humor, but there is actually a story behind that. Okay. Uh, last last spring, mm-hmm. I spent six weeks watching a robin try to build a nest on one of the lights on my back deck. Okay. And, and every time the the nest got to a certain size, it was too heavy for the light and the light would tip and the nest would fall to the ground and she'd start over and she'd start over. And after about four, six weeks, I mean, honestly, to the point where I thought, aren't you full of eggs? Don't you need to like go, go build your nest somewhere else. And about four, six weeks into it, I, I, I started feeling, I didn't start feeling bad. I went and got a ball of twine and I tied that light up so it was solid and firm. I made a foundation for her so she could successfully build her nest. Okay. And and she did. And she had three baby birds. And I have a, two cats and a dog. So I was very concerned about how interested they were in that nest and those birds. So <laughs> I'm building little walls to try to keep them away from being right under the nest. And okay. honestly... Awesome. I got really lucky. I was outside at the exact moment the first baby flew away from the nest. And I watched wow. this baby bird fly about 15 feet from my deck to the wood pile. And it was such a wonderful experience. And, <laughs> and I thought to myself that I got to help her bring her babies into the world. That's what a doula does. It helps helps mm-hmm. mothers and fathers bring their families into the world. So I helped them find success. 
And then what made it really drive it home is, and then two weeks later, I found a nest of baby bunnies in my fire pit. Mm. And I, I spent probably three weeks, maybe a month, keeping the dog out. I built <laughs> I, I built a metal cage over. So last, last spring, I spent a significant amount of my time helping Mother Nature's animals bring the babies the next generation into the world. So I was a baby animal duo. And it made me happy. I mean, what a great yeah. sense of feeling as part of But the lesson was nobody does it alone. That's true. That that tiny, that tiny little bit of help I provided, tying that light up so it wouldn't move anymore, mm -hmm. covering the fire pit so uh, my my eager lab, black lab, couldn't get to them. Tiny little things that I did that helped them find the success that they were working so hard for applies to humans as well. We can't yeah. do it alone. No. We can't do it alone. No. So who's going to help? Well, you have the power to choose who you're surrounded by. That's one of the beautiful things about being a professional, about being an entrepreneur. I don't have my coworkers assigned. I choose them. Okay. So, so yeah, so we can't do it alone. So choose those who are going to help you accomplish that goal. So that's yeah. the baby animal doula. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, you definitely got to... Build your Avenger squad with thought because some people ain't Autobots, man. They Decepticons. Mm. I, ride with you, I ride with you and the whole time. Man, the car ain't working. They, they took out the spark plug. They took out a tire ride. Like, hey, man, try that. They just keep taking stuff out. Like, we can't never go nowhere. We got this old jack led person. He sabotaged. Or, or heaven forbid, when they realize that you don't, that you're actually going to outpace them. They jump out of the car <laughs> and you're like, yeah. what? You were supposed to ride or die with me and now I'm dry. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So, yeah. 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 You got to watch out for them. Stuff to come. You, you do. And I'm you 80s do. baby. So I, I grew up with cartoons. So I always use those references. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Thundercats, Autobots. Oh my God, you're <laughs> awesome. You oh, said yeah, I just on the show. What? My playmates were the neighborhood boys, so, so we we did, yeah, we did all of that. Uh, Robotech and yeah, GI Joe. Wow. Hello, I was you Scarlet. Said Robotech. Hello. Nice. <laughs> nice. I'm still waiting on Thundercats people in Hollywood. Make the movie already. Ah, uh, but do it right. I don't want some garbage. Yeah, there you go. Do it right. Yeah, just reproduce the original. You don't need to update See, yeah. it. Just, just watch yes. the cartoon and make that. Don't don't think. Just, yep. just duplicate. That's all you got to do. Just duplicate. Exactly. And we'll be awesome. You're going to make a billion dollars easy. easy. Just from us. <laughs> yeah. We'll go. Our whole generation will show up. And have yes. the theme song. Don't don't give me no new artist. Just play what they had on the cartoon and give <laughs> us that, oh, my God, it's the original theme song. I'm did going to see it. it. Did you hear it in your head? Yeah. Thunder. Thunder. Thundercast. You said Thundercast. I heard it. <laughs> what are you talking about? What? What? Oh, What's already gosh. there? There you go. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what my Voltron movie? Like, what my movies that my cartoon? Oh, oh my god! god. No, make, make it real. Once again, Classic. I'm the princess. I'm wearing the pink suit and the in the blue tiger or blue lion. Oh my gosh, I loved that show. It's a lot of stuff that'll make a billion dollars if they make it the way it was made. Yeah, just go go ahead, Hollywood. Just steal it, copy it, reproduce it. You don't need to do anything because we oh. want it. We want it as is. Yes. Marvel, they just take their comics and just put it to screen and make billions. Mm -hmm. They try to invent the wheel, not like these fools and DC. Keep messing up stuff. Yeah. Like, they, just, they just won't do right over there, man. They just, just won't do right. Uh, don't get on my soapbox. I'm going to leave them alone. Maybe they I might get it. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Just entertain me. There you go. Now mm -hmm. you got this great phrase. If you don't have a strategy, you are part of someone else's. That that's actually in? that's actually not mine because there should be a quote with it. That is somebody else's quote. Okay. Um, but uh, so because I'm I'm having to be very integrity driven. I'm not going to take credit for somebody else's work. So I always make sure that if uh, if it came from somebody else, they do receive 
that. But okay. I'm a but my view of intentional connecting is strategic, and that st strategy comes from being a high view. It's about okay. seeing the map. Right. It's some people are GPS mm -hmm. people. They just need to know, turn left at the next light. I happen to be <laughs> one of those people where I want to see where everything is from each other, how it's laid out. And and strategy is intended to bring intention and productivity to your time, not mm -hmm. just busy. And I found I was looking for quotes on strategy because I'm thinking, okay. how do I express that this is something you should do? It's not just when I have time. Or, um, you know, what is if you do not have a strategy, basically, if you don't have a plan, you're part of someone else's. And my my quote on that is ditto. You know, <laughs> Wendy's yeah. going to second that where if you don't have a strategy, you're part of someone else's, especially this the skill set that I, I advocate for. It's not intended to be busy. It's not intended to be additional hours on your clock or more appointments on your calendar. Mm -hmm. It's intended for you to add layers to what you are doing now so that we will create depth and future value to come back to you. You're already okay. talking to your clients. Do you know how to engage with them so they become referral partners and raving fans and stay longer? I mean, that was something that I learned. I mentioned earlier that I had a vending and coffee business in the greater Flint area from 2002 to 2009. That equipment was expensive and heavy. And if I had an unhappy client and they wanted me to move that equipment, that was that was a big challenge. Lots of money lost. Um, I had to hire someone to move the equipment. So mm. the happier I can make my clients, the longer the longer they stayed, right? Multi-year, multi-generational mm -hmm. is is the goal. And uh or people who join a chamber of commerce and they go to five different events in one day. But they saw the exact same people at every event because everybody at the chamber went to those five events. So did you need to spend five hours of your day with the same people or could you have gone once and then spent the rest of your day doing other things for your business? Or um, if you're trying to find your way to uh, make time, get introductions or get in the front of people that are I don't want to say out of your reach, but as as business pros, mm -hmm. usually the decision maker is not at the referral meeting or at the chamber. But where are they? Well, they their business has grown. They've moved away from that stuff. They have managers. They have sales reps. They have people who do that. But they still show up at the golf outing. They're at the annual golf outing. They're at the annual dinner. They're at the annual holiday party. So do you know to go to those so you can take advantage of an opportunity to make a positive impression on that person that you've been trying to get to for six months because you can't get through the gatekeepers. So that's where the strategy comes from. As I mentioned, I have one client who is a strategy client. We are talking about who does he who does he partner with that has the same client as him, but doesn't provide the same service as him. They should team up and share customers where, you know, like no one, no one thinks about it with a mortgage and a real estate person. That's exactly what they do. But you can do that with any profession. You are, you're an estate attorney. So who do you want to partner with? Then find, then first define who your ideal client is and then who that ideal client also is hiring. Go strategically connect with them. So you not be you're not referral partners anymore. You're associates. I'll do this okay. for you. My associate would do that with you. So that's that's a lot of what the strategy is, and it's also intended to awesome. Yeah, because we get tired if we get busy. Let's get you productive. You can busy yourself right out of business. You can busy yourself right out of business and not understand what happened. Strategy is productive. Let's get you productive. Now Gina asks, where's the sign up link? <laughs> uh let's see uh wendycavery.com uh linkedin yes let's i'd love yeah let's talk i love it okay. um what have you seen that holds people back in networking uh not knowing actually what to do they gotcha. uh, their networking is an activity like cooking or running it's an activity that you do to reach a greater goal 
And uh, a lot of times people are sold on the activity will result in what I want, but it's like joining a gym where you joined a gym because they said you're going to lose 50 pounds. Now what? Well, that's not that that's not their part. Their part was to get you to join the gym. Now you need to hire the trainer to show you how to use the equipment and yeah. how to how to write. That's the so that's kind of what Crusaders was in, is intended for is the help you leverage the opportunities that you've already said yes to. And a lot of times what happens is they think they think all they needed to do was show up to the event. <laughs> I'm so off here. Give it to right. me. Right. Right. And, and, and then, right. Right. So then you get those people who they're there setting sales calls and nobody wants to talk to them because they're clearly setting sales call or they're just handing out business cards. Um, but now what? You know, or uh, my favorite one was the last last event I went to. Uh, there was a lady at the setting at the bar and she never left the bar the oh, whole wow. night because now what oh, oh oh this is this is not meant to be derogatory in any way but have you we've all had but a, a dog out or a cat out they get out the door and they act like they just made the break and then they're three feet away from the door like now what they don't know <laughs> so, yeah. we're about, so yeah. that's that's part of the hesitation uh another part of the hesitation is it's not their style they're not they don't they don't like the unfamiliar or the random or so they like the repetitive, which is a different type of networking, a different type of connecting, different yeah. organization altogether. Or then you get the people that they think it's sales, it's captured sales calls. So every person they talk to at that after hours is if you are looking for someone who can help you grow your business, here's my card. We could put a time on the calendar to discuss your needs. <laughs> the first, so. It's true. It's true. So for everyone who's listening, when you go to these random events, your goal is not this is the last time you're going to speak to them. It's just the first time. So you don't have to share everything. You don't have to dump that bucket of paint over their head. Your goal is to just make a connection that will make them say yes when you ask for the chance to talk to them again. Layers. Success comes in layers. Nice. Now we have to point to market, promote what you got going on. Mm. Uh, market, promote what I got going on. I do private stra uh, private coaching and private strategy, usually one-on-one, -on -one because there is a very customizable part to this. One of the greatest compliments I've received from a client was, I love that I don't have to change who I am to be good at this. My goal is not to reproduce Wendy Caverly. It's to help you find the skills that you can customize to be you. Um, I am actually speaking at the women's, on, it's called the Fempreneur Summit, and it is in Northville in March. I will be running a panel discussion on how to grow your business. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited by because I want uh, public speaking, share my passion, share my purpose, inspire others to connect with intention. I have the program with the French business coach that is launching in the month of March. If you or someone you know is interested in an almost like a mastermind coaching opportunity to connect with international professionals, this could be a really great fit for you. Uh, but all of this really starts with a conversation because I don't do general programs. I don't do one size fits all. Maybe someday I will, but right now, it's about you and your needs and how to help you get there effectively. So at the very beginning, it starts with the assessment. And the assessment's available on my website, Wendy, wendycaverly.com. Big red button on the home screen. Everyone likes to hit a big red button. Take the assessment, get the custom results. I, it will not only highlight your strengths, but it will also tell you why you are feeling certain frustrations. So it is a very revealing, very revealing assessment. Hmm. Okay. Oh, and, and as I mentioned earlier, if you are a business owner that has a sales force and you want your sales force to sell faster and have less turnover, we can create a program for you and your sales force that will do just that. Anything else? 
hanging out with you. I love hanging out. Okay. No. It's pretty yeah. awesome in the middle ground. <laughs> Ground floor tonight at 10 30. It's gonna be awesome entertainment, educational fun as well. Nice. So, what has been your biggest challenge on your journey? My biggest challenge is inspiring people to do this now. Um, let me, how do I say that a better way? It's not unusual for people to find their way to me after they've already spent tens of thousands of dollars on sales training and tens of thousands of dollars on digital marketing and thousands of dollars on appointment setters. They spend a lot of money because that stuff is flashy and that stuff they, you know, they say you need this to succeed. Mm. But if you don't know how to create a connection, if you don't know how to create a sincere connection or add those layers or, um, you know, explore your spider web. What I like to do, it's not about the person in front of you. It's about the person standing behind them. How do you make that relationship? So you gain that introduction to a new network. That's a lot of money being spent. So you need to have your network before you need your network. So one of my greatest challenges <clears throat> is, is helping people realize that this is part of the skills needed for success. It is foundational. And spend the first two years in business busy because that's what we do. We feel like if we're moving, we're succeeding. But a point will come where you're either tired or it's not working. And then you turn to someone like me. I want you now so you don't have to get tired. I am on top of included. I am not separate. I'm not an or. I'm an and. I'm the Mentos. I'm the Mentos to your Diet Coke. Let's let's add let's add this technique okay. to create an explosive spark. So that's probably my greatest challenge is oh, and I don't like the word networking. Like people, I'm, this is not cocktails and business cards. This is not ninja star throwing your card at people hoping it sticks. <laughs> it's creating connection. Okay. Yeah. And Gina has a question. Do you work with businesses serving the government? I would love that challenge. With my poli sci background, I might actually bring a really interesting perspective uh, to it. Bus that's one of the things that I love about what I do is at its heart, it is about creating relationship that that crosses mm -hmm. every industry, every genre, not friends. This is not about how to make friends. People people need clients. Yeah. Clients can become friends. But the skill applies across industries. Gina, we're going to talk. I am excited to talk. Good people. Yeah. Good show. No? You You're shaking your head? Oh. You. You're you, make, you make you make it work. All the great What happens when ahead. What happens when two people like to mirror the other person? You know, tell me, I already know you're awesome. Tell me everything else is my opening line. And he used it on me earlier. <laughs> so. <laughs> you, you get a great show there. <laughs> That's what you're going to get. Two great people That's right. show. What has been your impact on your journey? The impact on me or others? On oh, others. When I I hear from people how this was something that was overwhelming to them and I made it so simple that they they realized it was really how they could give to others to get that that changed their perspective or how I, I let them realize that it's OK to not do what others say you should be doing. It's it's really about your success. Um, I have these three women in my life. They were clients. Mm -hmm. They are two of them are still clients, but they've also become my personal boardroom. They are they are the other women that I go to to say I'm thinking about doing this, and I get different perspectives, different feedbacks. You don't have to be a CEO of a major corporation to have a boardroom advise you. You can create that yourself. And recently, we were gone for a weekend. And we were at the breakfast table and I was listening to them talk. And one said, well, have you asked this question? What about this question? Well, you have a wellness coach right here. Have you thought about introducing them? Watching what I, what I coach, what I encourage others to do, how I live my business, watching others do that. 
oh my God, the sense of pride that I felt that, that they see value in it. And not only do they copy it, but they found value as well. I mean, it's empowering. It's empowering to give people. It is. Yeah. So I guess at the end of the day, um, I can't tell you the pot, the impact I've had on them. They, they have to tell you, but it is available in like my testimonials, my okay. network. Some of my proudest accomplishments is people that even though we haven't been directly connected in years, they know they can call me. They know I'll answer the phone. That's, mm, that's real. It's the real that's yeah. That, yeah, because I'm, I'm building mine right now. I actually have a signature talk called The Power to Choose, uh, Strategically Connecting for Success. And that's the point of it is the boardroom, build your own boardroom. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I'm answering the question. So, uh... oh, no, you're good. <laughs> we might have to talk. Mm -hmm. You ever thought about writing a book? I do plan to write a book. I I just feel like every time I go to write the book, I learn even more about how I do this. So that's, that's a, right a book. Said, is never wrong. Like that's the author over there, like you. Yeah, you check a, and see. A book. A, yes. And just FYI, if anything you heard from me today sounds familiar, I do have a tendency to think I'm a genius and I come up with an idea that somebody else came up with a hundred years ago. So yes, I know there's a lot of Dale Carnegie in what I do, oh, <laughs> but oh, yeah, oh. sometimes, you know, yeah, but Hey, hey I have a moniker when I got my business management degree, my moniker is Egbert von Fonsworth, the third Esquire. So I'm smart now. <sighs> I love that. I'm Who smart. Love Egbert. <laughs> my bad. Nose, nose got to be up in the air. Yes. Hmm. I'm, 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 I'm a scholar now. <laughs> See, we're, we have a bar name, Miranda Stewart, <laughs> but you can call me Randy. So <laughs> awesome, awesome. See, it's family already, man. So I see that already. I'm gonna be on the team. <laughs> Last question What advice do you have for someone trying to find their purpose? Mm. If you are new at this, if you know that you you want you want to move forward and you know you can't do it alone, my greatest and easiest advice is to say yes, give generously, and be patient. Because truly good things take time. And this happens to be one of those things that two, three years down the road, you're going to suddenly go, holy cow, look at what I've done and I didn't even realize it. But say yes to the event, to the opportunity, to the conversation, because that's where you're going to uncover the next opportunity, the connection, the client, the referral partner. Give generously because the best way to build a connection with somebody else is to not have it be transactional. I'm helping you because I have the power to help you, not because I'm getting something out of it. And then be patient. It sucks. God bless it doesn't suck. But. If you quit, you got to start over. So be patient. It will come. That's true. That's, that's, that's that Yoda game, boy. And be comfortable, relax, and get that Yoda game. Yes, am I. <laughs> Someone's going to hear this and watch the repeat. And like, I might as well try. Like, you ain't got nothing to lose. The, the only time you lose is when you quit. Right. Mm -hmm. right, right. Worst case scenario, you become awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what a horrible outcome. <laughs> yeah, that's a horror. Your life sucks. You're awesome. So that's horrible. so horrible. Yeah. You actually <laughs> made your dreams come true. How dare you be that person? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. I know. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> you might as well try. It's better might that as way. well. Yeah. You don't lose until you quit. Mm hmm. And this has been pretty awesome. I'm glad. To give it you I all, enjoyed all it. Here. You need to collaborate. I love collaboration. Um, any final words? I thank you for having me. I honestly, the, to be honest, when I'm like Saturday night, what is, doesn't he realize I don't have a life? Why would he think I'm available on a Saturday night? So, but. <laughs> This has been a great way to spend my Saturday night. <laughs> so. I, you know, <laughs> you know, 
Yeah, I, I, I didn't think that. <laughs> I ain't think that at all. I'm trying to find a tap play that ain't gonna have like I got plans. I got this. Like well, seven's kind of early. You can still hit the <laughs> if you try to hang out. You know. <laughs> Oh my gosh. We knew each other in a different life, man. You're real cool. Oh, I lo- thank you. Cool <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, like we were talking about before, people are people. And so just have a good time. Have a good time. Mm-hmm. It makes all you the difference it. in the world. That's what and we're both in Michigan. So that, <laughs> we got yeah, we that Midwest we background. <laughs> we, we, we know what it's like to go from negative two on a Monday to 30 degrees on a Tuesday, to 45 on a Wednesday, to 70 on a Thursday, and back to negative one on a Friday. All in the same week. You're like, all four seasons? Really? And and we also know what it's like to see the sun shining and know it's lying to us because it means it's super cold outside. So, like yeah. today, yeah, that sun is gorgeous, but it also means that it's cold as heck. It, it lies so much, like, don't so believe the lie. You, you're from Michigan, nice. you know it's cold outside. Yes, yes, yes. I'm talking about that Friday, like, I know, we had that, we you cold. It, the, the sun is lying to you, it's not true. The sun is lying to you. <laughs> it's That's right. It's degrees outside, it ain't warm. Yeah. <laughs> we in Michigan, what are you doing? <laughs> I honestly, I thought that yesterday I opened up the back door to let the dog out and the sun is shining and the birds are chirping. And I'm like, you are all lying to me. It is winter mm-hmm. out there. Yes, <laughs> so. yes, it is. That is truly fake news in Michigan until you see, what's the temperature? 45, cool. But yep. it's eight degrees, but it's so sunny. Mm-mm. It's, Mm-mm. It wants you to go out there mm-hmm. and get you sick. Don't do it. Exactly. And Gina said we should do a happy hour together. I'm down. I would love to do that. I'm down. Yeah. That. Yeah. I would love to do that. This is a great way to spend a Saturday night. <laughs> that was a great time in the middle ground. It's going to get better at 10 30 because we're going to chop it up on relationships. You know, oh, you got to come back around for that one. Let me do a little DJ work for you. I, I saw that. You got some DJ skills in you. <laughs> I'm faking it, but I fake it till I make it every time. So. As long as you think I'm good, it doesn't matter if I am. <laughs> I'm you. Uh, yeah, you, you definitely got to check out the, the other show at 10 You might have a good time with that one, too. Nice. nice. This, is, this is our business, professional. You know, we crack a lot of jokes, but the ground floor, we're going to chop it up on the other stuff, man. Mm-hmm. So if you mm-hmm. drink your Jack or your bourbon, whatever you tend to do, your business, unwind, relax, and you're going to have a yeah. great show. Yep. Exactly. Just be real. Have fun. My now, favorite song, I don't think I have one, but the song that I like to listen to before I go on stage or before I speak, I actually did listen to it before I jumped okay. on this call, uh, Unstoppable by Saya. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm a, I'm unstoppable. I'm a Porsche with no brakes. My favorite part is I put my armor on to show you how strong I am because I'm unstoppable. Okay. Now, so I, I give y'all some I make y'all have a good laugh. When I used to get ready to take finals at Wayne State, I would put my headphones in. And I'd be banging Bon Jovi, wanted dead or alive. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to say that. I mean, who doesn't love yeah, that well, song? Let's go. Let's take this test. Yes. Let's get it. That, yes, or uh, Blaze of Glory. That would be the other one. Um, yes, I'll think the other one. Yes, too. yes, classic. Yes, yes, classic. Man, don't you listen, Jeff? Like you, you, you ain't on this vibe, man. I'm, I'm just, you don't understand. I'm, I'm ready. Bring the test on. Let's get it. Let's go. That's right. It's ready like, enough. Woo! I'm tired. I'm ready to get up out of here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Gina, she's. Gina, she thug life. I ain't no joke. No, right we can now. make that happen, Gina. We that's 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 easy. We just gotta put the time on the calendar. Jeffrey and I were talking about. I'm a half hour from Novi, so yeah, it's please spots out Novi. Mhm. Yep. And um, yeah, the the Fempreneur event is in uh, Northville, which is right over there too. Oh, that's, that's the same area. Yep. 
Exactly. So and that's an all day summit uh, of women entrepreneurs, both those like me and those who are interested in becoming business owners and entrepreneurs. It's a great it's intended to be a great introduction for for women who want to go into business. What day? And is it, it is a uh, March. Hold on. I got my calendar right here. I believe it's March 8th. It is Wednesday, March 8th. 2023 if you're watching this from the future and uh it starts at 8 30 and it goes all day uh there are panel discussions there's speakers there's expos there'll be breakouts uh so i'm i'm excited i'm actually bringing wardrobe changes so what i will wear on stage will be different than what i will wear when i talk okay. and um yeah, I, I look forward to I look forward to talking to women who who want to do this, but they want to do it effectively, not just figure it out as they go and then fail. No, you're not alone. We're, there's a lot of people who want to actively help you, even if it's just a support. Yeah. And, okay. and frankly, I am doing the webinar, but I help a lot of men, too. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, everybody needs to know how to be effective. But yeah, that event yeah. is focused on women. Mm -hmm. And he's going to bring it home like, you know, do both. Hey, do you both. know what? I don't, if you want to come and, you know, maybe carry my stuff, get me a drink when I need it. Totally. Look at, <laughs> I mean, we all need, we all need, we all need a pool boy or a Sherpa or, you know, that, that, that security, security. Hi. <laughs> yes. You can talk to me all you want, but if I don't like it, he's messing you up. So, uh, you know, <laughs> Oh, I'm just getting you in trouble now, right? Are you good? You're just silly. Oh, man, you're hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's, that's going right there. Thank <laughs> you. Oh. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this awesome show with another awesome guest, strategist, speaker, consultant, founder of Crusaders Networking, Wendy C. Caverly. And we got more great guests coming. I'm booked until mid-April. Ooh. Man, man, that's, wow. Hey, you and I met at a networking event. So a speaker connect or something of that nature. So good for you. Mm -hmm. that, that means yeah. it's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we, we're trying to grind it up. Trying to take over the world. Like Cobra. Trying to do this. <laughs> Why Cobra? <laughs> well, yeah, Joe ain't going to take over the world. I mean, so... <laughs> They save the world. <laughs> that, don't even, that don't even work. Right. <laughs> That's my brother Milton. He's a former guest. Yeah, I'm saving the world with G.I. Joe. Like, they're the heroes, Joe. That don't even, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can't. We're going to be We got to root for now. the good guys. Um, we got to root for the good guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but you know. Well, I mean, isn't that good. part of the, the superhero lore is the superhero and the supervillain were best friends at one point? No. So. No. Fine, take over the world, but I'm going to stop you. <laughs> and we were doing so well, be on the same. I'm so thing. sorry. I know. You, you just you just got to ruin the joke. You just too got to. Went too I, far. I, I got to stop you, like I, I'm not trying to take over the world. I'm trying to take over the world okay. with this money, so I can. Then, then we're going to do it together. Mm -hmm. Nah, right. nah, you just have to count. I don't believe you. you no. Oh, how I dare you! I don't believe you now. You're lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> you like the sun when it's eight degrees outside. You're lying to me right now. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> oh, it's a good oh, thing man. we're doing this in layers. <laughs> yeah. I definitely want you to stay in the backstage who want to talk some business with you. So that's okay. Real talk. Exactly. So I hope okay. everybody yeah, my pleasure. come back for 1030 Eastern time for Premiere show, ground floor. I'm talking about relationship. It's going to be awesome. More of this. I was Gina. Yeah, that's true. Team, man, you're supposed to be a team, man. You just keep. I'm at, I'm getting two snowballs. That's all right. I'm put, I'm put your name on it. <laughs> Teammate. You just keep showing it. Kind of, all this, I get this women empowerment. We got to stick together. But we teammates, man. You just met her. Yeah. <laughs> I feel some kind of way about that, right? He just met her. 
Wait, it's I'm like, you just, you. why are you taking her side? You just met her. You've known me for a while. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Team Wendy, really? We got to be, be team. We got to be team Wendy with it. Really, Gina? That's what we I've doing actually, here. I've used that hashtag in the past. Hashtag Team Wendy. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you just got to keep, keep rubbing All right, keep rubbing in. All right, I'm going to stop. Mm-hmm. All right. But the hair, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, the hair um, is nice, yes, yes. I, mm. Mother nature and mm-hmm. good genes and a lockdown where I couldn't get my hair cut for months. So <laughs> thank you. Works, I'm, like, I do so really fun. like it. Thank you. But now, I'm about to get an outro. Check out Ground Floor 1030, everybody. Come back. I have a great one. Thank you.